It's been raining mid-size SUVs. First came the Kia Seltos facelift, then came the Honda Elevate, and now there's this. Say hello to the Citroen C3 Aircross. Now this is the French car maker's fourth offering here in India, and this one comes with the SUV credentials. It has the upright stance, it has the imposing looks, and it has the raised ground clearance. And to give it an edge over its rivals, this one also comes with the option of seven seats. But Citroen is offering this with just one engine, a turbo petrol, one transmission, a six-speed manual, and in just one variant. So does the Citroen C3 Aircross have what it takes to take on the mid-size SUV segment? Let's find out. This car is based on the Citroen C3's C-Cube platform. So it shares a lot of similarities with its sub 4 meter compact SUV sibling. For example, you have the same bonnet, you have the same front fenders, you have the same A-pillar and even the same door. But Citroen has done well to give this car an identity of its own. Sure, it bears some family resemblance thanks to its double chevron logo and these chrome elements out here. And you also have these wipe patterned DRLs and the reflector headlamps like the Citroen C3. But the face of this car is completely redesigned. Uh, you have this silver skid plate out here which adds a nice contrasting touch to this design. And what's unique is that these white elements here are the shape of a SIM card holder in your cell phone. What you also get with this C3 Aircross are these chunky tires and 17-inch wheels which I think look really attractive on this car. Moving on to the sides, you also find this body cladding which is sort of off-center. That's typical French eccentricity in their design. B pillar onwards is where the C3 Aircross has witnessed maximum re-engineering. The rear doors are much larger than the sub 4 meter C3 to aid entry and exit for passengers. And the C pillar has been stretched to maximize interior room. An interesting detail is the glass area embedded in the C pillar, which gives an effect of a wraparound rear windscreen. At the rear, its tail lamps are similar to the C3, but to add some differentiation, it features a black band which runs the width of the boot. Expectedly, the C3 Aircross is much larger than the C3 in every dimension and its wheelbase is over 130mm longer too. In fact, the C3 Aircross is actually the widest and the tallest among all its mid-size SUV rivals and it certainly looks like a flavorful offering with really neat proportions bearing a cleanly sculpted design. The first signs of cost cutting become glaringly evident when you try to get inside. Yes, it still carries over the old school flap type door handles and the way its keyhole is executed, it certainly screams cheap. And even its key doesn't really make a great first impression. Right from the moment you unlock this car, it just doesn't give you that premium feel and it all boils down to this key. I mean, this definitely doesn't deserve place in a car that costs north of 10 lakh rupees. Um, and of course you have the twist key starter, which is really old school. That aside, when you look at other aspects of this car, the interiors are pretty pleasing. The dash is pushed all the way to the windscreen. It has that same funky design as the C3. And to give it some more premiumness and some more color, you have this two-tone color scheme and you have these beige accents out here. The seats themselves are really comfortable. The seating position is good. The ergonomics are really nice. And I can see the bonnet. I can see the edges of the bonnet quite easily. On other aspects, the driver gets a dedicated armrest. Really comfortable for those long drives. Unfortunately though, the passenger doesn't have any place to rest their right arm. 
You have this small little storage area here. You have this place to store your phone and some deep pockets as well. Unfortunately though, there's no wireless charging pad. I must point out that the phone holder isn't angled steeply and doesn't have a rubberized base or a ledge to hold your phone securely. So when you accelerate, your phone is likely to fly off. The glove box is pretty large and you also have bottle holders in the front doors. And then when you look at the instrument cluster, Citroen has resorted to a much more vibrant, a much nicer instrument cluster compared to the C3. You also get this nice and large 10.2 inch infotainment system which comes with wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay and even the sound quality from its speakers is really quite pleasing. And now let's look at what else this car has to offer. Citroen has covered the basics with a touchscreen, reversing camera, rear wiper and washer and ESP. However, it misses out several convenience features like power folding outside mirrors, automatic climate control, auto dimming inside mirror and it doesn't get side and curtain airbags even as an option. Features like a sunroof and ventilated seats are missing as well. I'm in the 5-seater version and as you can see, space is plenty. I've got good knee room, good headroom and from where I'm sitting, let me tell you, seat comfort, cushioning is pretty much spot on. Now the seat is also wide enough to accommodate three passengers, but the middle passenger will not get a headrest, nor they will get a three-point seat belt. Then, while the five-seat version does come with an armrest, the seven-seat doesn't, there are quite a few niceties that are missing from this rear seat experience. For starters, you don't have sun shades for the rear windows, you don't have rear aircon vents, nor do you have side and curtain airbags. But a thing that is really annoying and really unacceptable is the fact that rear power window switches are placed between the front seats instead of in their conventional position. So they are quite a stretch to operate. But really, if you are chauffeur driven, it is the seven seat version that you should be looking at and here's why. And now we are in the middle row of the seven seat version and as you can see, space is still pretty much the same as the five-seater. But what's unique here is that you also get the option of a reclining backrest, which reclines in 40 and 60 ratio. And you also get air vents with fan speed adjustment, which takes care of the third row passengers. Strangely, the seven-seat version doesn't get a middle armrest, but the aircon vents certainly do a great job of cooling this area on a hot day. Okay, now let's see what the third row of the Citroen C3 Aircross is all about. Now, uh, getting into the third row is pretty easy. It's just a one-touch tumble for the 40% of the middle row. The 60% just folds flat. Now, as you can see, I'm not in the most comfortable of places right now. The seat is really low. I'm in a very knees-up position. The backrest is upright. Headroom is just about okay and footroom is tight. So, well, for a half an hour journey to the movies or to a restaurant, you won't mind carrying your friends here, but on longer drives, adults will definitely not volunteer to be in this space. You have bottle holders on the sides, you have charging provisions, and this being the seven-seater, it also comes with air vents for the rear passenger. With all the seats up, there's barely enough room for a laptop bag. But with the last row folded, there's 444 litres of cargo space. What's interesting is that you can easily remove the third row of seats. It's really a one-person job and barely takes a minute. You also have the option to drop down the two row of seats and haul serious cargo. With the C3 Aircross, Citroen is offering you just one engine option, and that is this. It's a 110 horsepower, 1.2 litre, three cylinder turbo petrol engine. 
and this is the same engine which it shares with its sub 4 meter compact SUV sibling, the C3. Now at this point, you'd be thinking that a 1.2 liter engine in a car that is over 200 kilos heavier than the C3, will it be underpowered? I'm happy to report, it's not. In fact, it's far from it. Citroen has tuned this engine so well, gear ratios have been tweaked so nicely that this car feels really eager and really enjoyable to drive. This engine is really, really smooth. The throttle response is sharp and every time you flex your right foot, it does react to your inputs. Of course, being a turbo petrol engine, it does suffer from some delay before the boost comes in. So when you drop the revs below 2000 RPM, you will need a downshift or just be patient for that turbo to start singing once again. But once boost comes in, there's no spike or there's no sudden rush of power, but it comes in nice and strongly and the mid-range will pull you through most situations. It'll take on any overtaking maneuver with absolute ease. Getting to three digit speeds in this car is actually very, very easy. In fact, I'm in sixth gear right now and when I was talking to you, I've already hit 100 kilometers an hour before realizing it. It is that smooth and it is that responsive. And when you really spin this motor out, it lets you, it is quite happy to spin. And even at higher RPMs, it doesn't really filter in that three-cylinder thrum. In fact, I'll go a step further and say that this is one of the best small capacity turbo petrol engines out there in the market. Thankfully, unlike the C3, this one gets a tachometer, so you do know what engine speed you are driving at. What I also like doing is rowing through this six-speed manual gearbox. The gear shift quality is really nice. And even though the clutch is quite light, due to its snappy nature, you will need to put in that little bit of extra effort and carefully modulate the pedals for a smoother drive. What I would have liked though is an option of an automatic. Now while on the open road, I'm really having a lot of fun shifting gears manually, but in day-to-day -day commuting scenarios, in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, I would have certainly liked the option of an automatic. Citroen will launch an automatic option. However, the timeline isn't confirmed as of now. Another thing that I really like about the C3 Acros is the steering. Now, it is really light, but it weighs up very nicely as the speeds increase. And it gives you a good amount of confidence while you are cruising at three digit speeds. Now the steering is nice and sharp. It changes directions very nicely. And well, there is a certain degree of confidence that it infuses when you are driving in an enthusiastic manner. And now coming to the highlights of this car and that is its suspension. Now its bump absorption capability is exceptional to be honest. And probably it is one of the best in its segments already. It takes on the sharp edges of the road really nicely and it doesn't filter any of those sharp body movements or road shocks into the cabin. So yes, low speed ride, definitely one of the best in its segment. A trade-off to its soft suspension is that at higher speeds, you can feel it float a bit. You can feel those suspension oscillations and those sort of vertical body movements when you are cruising. Citroen also arranged for a small off-road course to showcase this car's ability to tackle bad roads. Sure, it's not a hardy SUV in the true sense, but it certainly feels quite capable to be taken on broken and dilapidated sections of the road. Its 200mm ground clearance certainly builds its case. So that's the Citroen C3 Acros for you. It is a fundamentally sorted car. Engine performance is strong, 
the suspension offers great ride quality and then the flexibility of seven seats will certainly be a deal maker for some. But Citroen is just offering one engine, one transmission and one variant with the C3, thus limiting its appeal. And then it misses out a lot of features. Now, some of them are aspirational features which you might just ignore, but then there are many convenience features which you'd expect in a car of this price. Now, at the time of filming this video, we don't have the prices to pass a definitive verdict. To summarize this review then, the Citroen C3 Across gets the basics right and it comes with some really clever packaging. However, the blatant cost-cutting and the missing modern niceties isn't going to go down too well with new age, techy, mid-size SUV buyers. Now, for Citroen to even make this compete with its rivals, it will have to price the C3 Across really aggressively. So will it? We'll know very soon.